Greetings, brave adventurers! How you doing today? My name's Foxy Bard, and we are here to finish the story we started last week. It's been an experience. I've decided I really don't like Tyler. He is an aggravating person, and sadly, he doesn't really get his comeuppance. He sort of wins, which sucks. Ugh. Well... Grab yourself a seat around the fire, and we'll dig into and finish this tale of role-playing. As a reminder, today's story is posted by the user Mighty Bulwark, and is titled The Tales of a DM That Slowly Lost Their Groove. This one is part three, which is not the final, but don't worry, we will be doing both parts today. We're gonna finish this story. And let's just hope that I don't wish some horrific fate on Tyler by the end of it, but don't hold your breath. <sighs> Tale start. Content warning for mentions about surgery. So, let's start with me, the DM's, personal life. My mother had to face a surgical procedure. It wasn't life-threatening, but the consequences of not doing it would have been way worse. She had made a full recovery, but it took months and was officially out of danger only a year later after further examinations. Yet surgery can be just a monster that eats up so much of your life. I'm, I'm glad she was okay. That, that's good. <laughs> that's very good. These months had been hard, and it may seem selfish, but I just wanted one evening every week to not think about it. I'm gonna pause here. That is not selfish. You deserve to have a chance to have a break from it all. And it sucks that it was taken from you. This is absolutely not you being selfish. I just wanted to run a game about magic and lost temples, and even that was denied me. Listen, listen. OP, if you want someone to play in a game who isn't Tyler, I'll volunteer. You, you, you're in my Discord, you can ask me. I really should have put the campaign on hold, especially for how bad it was getting, but in this case, my pride was my undoing. Tyler was needling, because of course he did, and joked around that, Oh well, that was a great waste of time, just when the campaign was getting good. I was told by the OP that that impression is dead on for Tyler, so I'm, I'm not changing it. I shouldn't have been bothered that much by that comment. <sighs> but alas, I was emotional and prideful, and I wanted to keep running it my way for the principle of the thing. Oh pride, the greatest downfall of all of humankind. After the fade to black, I wasn't as much bothered by the sexual content. I was rather done. I didn't want to see any romance, just adventure. Not to mention that the whole wanting more out of that fade to black, and the fact that Tyler took the time to lament this both with and without the DM really struck a nerve. I couldn't get rid of Tyler, but at least we could focus on the game, right? No more sexual content in the game. Oh, so we can focus on the game. We can focus on the game. Right? Wrong. After making a very bothersome comment about having that tabaxi girl sleep at the feet of the bed after we're done, I tell them that I feel uncomfortable with it and I just ban it. Stop flirting that way. No risque jokes. Was I petty? Maybe. And that's when Tyler <sighs> throws a fit, blocks me on social media accounts, and pretends an apology or else he tanks the campaign. Pretends an apology? Demands an apology. I believe that's supposed to be demands an apology. Because if he doesn't play, no one else plays. Again, the party sides with him. Again, just blocking me because, in Tyler's words, it would have gotten ugly if he kept up the conversation. Ha <laughs> uh, it's too late. I already wish some horrific fate on Tyler. Hmm. I'm just gonna smile through it, guys. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Maybe we could have found a compromise. Maybe I could have explained them again that I found that uncomfortable. 
Maybe I could have told them I needed a break because we were friends, or at least that's what I believed, but <sighs> no. I should have apologized, and we should have played again with nothing changing. I didn't feel like a DM anymore. The game wasn't fun anymore. Heck, it wasn't even my game. That's because you weren't really the DM anymore. You were a hostage. This isn't, this isn't your fault. This is all Tyler, and ho oh, ho I hope all of his roles are nat twos. Not nat ones, because those make for fun stories, but nat twos? Hmm, those are the worst. And that's when, a few days later, Lucas tells me that we need to talk. Hmm, <sighs> see you for the final part. TLDR. Player again throws a tantrum when told to cut the risque jokes. Party sides with him because they want to keep playing no matter what, despite blocking the DM and being a generally commanding son of a gun. Tail pause. I meant what I said. I hope that Tyler only ever rolls nat twos on his dice. In fact, I wish the same on that entire party. I want them to fail at everything, but not in a way that's significant or funny. I want it to be the most mundane possible failures. Nothing that anyone could do about it, and nothing remotely entertaining to talk about. Just the worst. That's what I want. Am I evil? Hmm. Is this the Foxy Corruption arc? Oh no. Well, nothing to do but finish the story. Let's get to it. Okay, last part. Same user, same story. Let's just get right into it. Tail, resume. The fourth and final part. Afraid it's going to end with a whimper rather than a bang, but such is life. Lucas sent me a text claiming that we needed to talk. After movie night. During lockdown, we used to watch some movies and shows on Netflix in streaming. I didn't look forward to this since I felt alienated from my group every day a little bit more. Especially when I told Lucas that you can't just say, we need to talk, to an anxious person. Oh boy, if that's not the truth. Just say what you want to say to someone who has anxiety. Trust me, I it, it, that's better. Don't give build-ups. That's not good. <laughs> we will freak out. It'll be 10 million times worse. Lucas says if I'm sure I want to hear it because it would make me angry. He was right. It did. That was when I know that, prompted by Tyler, they're staging some kind of an intervention? They needed to talk about my subpar DMing and erratic behavior. This sends me into a panic attack. I can admit that my DMing had been pretty subpar, of course. My situation at home wasn't the best. In fact, time and time again, I wanted to just quit it. It was the best way. But what really bothered me is that I always asked for feedback. Not only they weren't honest, it was Lucas that confirmed that they stayed overnight not to discuss about the game, but to nitpick it. Right after I went to bed for the last few months. This lack of honesty and communication hurt me, and especially because it was Tyler's idea. Of course it was Tyler's idea. <sighs> I have something else I wish upon him now. I wish that all of his future campaigns get two sessions in, and they're great sessions, and then they're foiled by scheduling conflicts. Okay, I think I might actually be turning evil. Your story has turned me evil. The same Tyler that didn't respect boundaries and was responsible for making one of the worst scenes I've seen in a tabletop RPG. I shouldn't have shown up, but what's the use in running from problems? Movie night is miserable because I just want to know what's going on, and no one speaks. In the end, it starts just as Lucas said, only a list of demands about the game. Make it more streamlined, some of the quests weren't clear, etc. 
all things that we could have solved together, and then they ask about my private life. They prod, they circle around me, they ease into it, coming to finally ask what's wrong, because Tyler told me I was going through a rough patch. That's right. There was a time I trusted Tyler, and there was a time I felt I needed to confide in someone, anyone, about it. I didn't tell him everything because I didn't want to share it. My grief is not something I share easily, but back then I was in a dark place. I felt manipulated, being led into a social situation, circled and pressured like that made me feel so alone and so impotent. It was a pretty big violation of trust. That was the moment I didn't see anyone as a friend anymore. Between the talking behind my back, not sharing feedback, and now this, I felt numb. So I spilled the beans. It was the only way to get out of that situation. I'm not proud of it. The campaign actually collapsed on itself a month later. I had the final falling out with Tyler for reasons unrelated to the game. I finally called him out for his gaslighting behavior out of the game, and we don't talk anymore. Part of me hoped something like that would happen just to cut ties with him and the rest of the group. I didn't DM for a year after that. I wanted to be a player for a while. DMing was so much fun before that, now it just feels bothersome. Even though my current group is made up of total sweethearts, I'm always afraid that they may be nitpicking behind my back, and if I don't resolve their conflicts in-game and out of it, the group may collapse. I know that not every player is like that. Most of the people I talked my whole group about said that they were maladjusted at best, but this nagging feeling and insecurity will probably stay with me for the rest of my life. My friend, that's called a trauma response. It can happen about anything, for anything. Would you believe that I actually have a similar response with people arguing about a rule that is utterly pointless to the current game situation, because my one group that was terrible <laughs> used to do that all the time, so I understand where you're coming from. A silver lining at least. Slowly but surely, I'm having fun DMing again. I'm running the wild beyond the witchlight and having fun with it. In fact, I love running modules now. One day, maybe I'll do a homebrew campaign again when Spelljammer comes out. Ooh, magical spaceships and other extra planar nonsense. Yeah, it sounds fun to me. It was more of a vent than a horror story. No, this was a horror story. You're, you're valid. But thank you for listening anyway. TLDR, group prods into the DM's private life with social pressure. Campaign collapses after that. Tale end. I feel like this story has temporarily shifted my alignment to chaotic evil. Hmm. Tyler and the rest of the group that sided with him, I hereby bestow the following curses upon you. Your shoes are always wet inside. There's an itch in the back of your throat that you just can't get rid of. Your sneak attack dice never roll higher than a two. The next unearthed arcana that you absolutely love never gets adapted into official material. A mosquito bites you in the one place that's the hardest for you to scratch. Oh, and the zipper on your jeans refuses to stay up, it keeps falling down. If I think of any more curses, I'll bestow them as I see fit, but for now we're gonna stick with just those, plus the other ones that I gave you before. In short, OP, it's really, really good that you did get out of that group eventually. They were extremely toxic. That was not a good environment for you, or really for any DM who didn't run things exactly, precisely how Tyler wanted, which... <sighs> I have my own Tyler. 
it, it's, his name wasn't Tyler, but basically the same thing. Kind of the sole reason I left my own old group. I've got a couple videos on that. I named my Tyler Gus, but same basic kind of idea. Oh, and with a good helping of misogyny and toxic everything. So, you know, there's that too. So congratulations, you did it. You told the story that started the Foxy corruption arc. I'm evil now. Sorry, everyone. I'm evil. Mwah, ha, 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 ha. Now I shall only talk in the Foxy evil voice. Ha, <laughs> ha. That is the end of the video, so do the YouTube things, foolish mortals, or I will bestow curses upon you, too! <laughs> and also, there are some who are immune to my curses. Curse them! My patrons on patreon.com slash foxybard. They cannot be cursed by my hands, for they support these hands. <sighs> Someday I shall get you, patrons! You will see. Hmm. Ah, but their names, their cursed names, are scrolling by the screen right now. If you want to join them and become immune to my curses, curse you, you can sign up as well for as little as $3 a month. It gets you access to an exclusive channel in my Discord. It also puts you at the front of the line for any test games that I run for it indie RPGs. But now I must go and do my new evil biddings. <laughs> so let's not douse the fire, let's burn the forest down. <laughs> and get back to your own foolish mortal adventures. Fools. <laughs>